Two basic rules of HEC1 style are first to prepare a schematic map of your watershed. The HEC1 manual gives a variety of suggestions for shapes of your symbols. And this is not a bad one. It has squares for sub-basins, circles for combines, triangles for reservoirs, and little arrows for routing reaches and diversions. Another example I did a long time ago also uses squares and circles the same way, but has diamonds for diversions and triangles for routing. The second of the basic guidelines is to use the KM record to document what you're doing in each operation. You can use as many of those as you need to to give a detailed record of what you've done for that operation. Instead of using asterisks for that kind of documentation as is done here, but should have been done with KM records, you would want to use asterisks to comment on what you've done with the file. such as adding or removing or relocating operations in a file you got from other people. Beyond those basic guidelines, it's crucial to have a fundamental understanding and appreciation of the limitations that HEC1 puts on you. First of all, op Operations cannot have names longer than six letters. And if you're not careful, this can really cramp your style and ruin your scheme. Second, use unique names for your operations. After all, they are the names of your operations and you don't want two of them with the same name. These limitations imply that you need a scheme that uses single letters and may be a little bit cryptic and unintuitive, which leads to the principle that you must declare and follow your convention. At the top of this file, we've put the declaration of our naming convention along with a difference of opinion. Let's start with the easiest here. Combines are very easily always C for combine. Subbasins, we can drop a letter uh, by always just using a number for our subbasins, possibly with a suffix A, B, C. Our intuition really wants to call routing reaches R operations. And from there it gets a little bit more complicated because we have retrieval and diversion and our reservoirs want to be S's or R's. In the com first convention we have a subbasin, a routing reach, a reservoir, a combine, a diversion, and the split hydrograph being diverted out and retrieved. That makes pretty good sense, but the V is not very intuitive for these first four operations that are very common. So we have the second one that has our subbasin, our routing reach, our storage routing, our combine, our diversion main, and our diverted hydrograph. Again, it's a compromise, but it's in the more complex area anyway. I've used the second of the conventions in this file. Let's see how it looks in the output. I've scrolled down to the diagram that HEC1 creates 
and let's follow. We've got subbasin 15 diverted out to diverted 15, and the main 15 is now routed. That could have been called RM15 if there was an ambiguity. Then we have subbasin 13, and we combine two at C13. We route C13A, then we route C13B. We could have omitted the uh, C if there's no ambiguity. Uh, then we divert 1A, and we have the main 1A. We combine it, or well, we bring in 21, and then combine M1A and 21. And so we go, and it's apparent that sometimes you have to, uh, these letters do pile up. I forgot to fix this one, but sometimes these letters do pile up, and very quickly you uh, approach your limit of six letters. So this is why it's such a big deal to have a consistent scheme and to drop letters aggressively when there's no ambiguity. So here we probably should have done R13A and R13B. Now I will just look a little closer at the diversion operation and that will be it. This is diversion operation M15. It wants to know what we want to call the diverted flow in case we need it later. We said we will call it D15. Now we say for every 300 that comes in, none goes out. For every 10,000 that comes in, 7,000 goes out. And it goes to D15. And later on in the file, possibly, we bring in D15. There it is, and we call the operation D15, which is the same name as the hydrograph we are retrieving. That does not cause any ambiguities. That's, and then we would want to put this convention on our schematic map, and there would be no confusion. And that's it.